I'm going to speak a little bit about the love of God. Last night at dinner, uh, I spoke to a person about the love of God, and this lady suffered from severe depression, you know, and I could just see when I talked to her that the freedom that they have received, you know, in the Lord after they believed in the message of grace um, was just such a relief, you know, to her and her husband. Um, but there was something that she said to me that basically shocked me. Lately, I've been preaching on the love of God, not just as something that God does because he cannot help to do it, but as, um, but as something that happens in the heart of God when he beholds uh, something that is of beauty and something that is of value. And um, <clears throat> what this lady said to me, she said, one of the things that made her or that, that basically um, took the love of God uh, and categorized it in a place as something that can never set her free, that can never give her dignity and never give her worth, is the fact that God is preached as someone that is love. The Bible says in 1 John 4 that God is love. It says, brethren, let us love one another, for God is love, and whosoever loves is born of God and knows God. Now, that God is love, I, I preached myself. I've many times preached uh, love is, God is love as, and then I would take the pulpit, you know, and say, is as much as what this pulpit is wood. doesn't matter what you do. If you come to this pulpit and you touch it, he, uh, we would be love. Now, um, I do believe that God is love in the sense that he can never uh, function out, out of just bitterness or hatred, but that he would always be loving towards people. Um, but, you know, th there's something bigger about love. And this is what this lady said to me. She said when she started to hear uh, that, that God loves people, not because... He cannot help himself but love, as I have preached many times. Um, but that love is actually what happens in the heart of God. When he sees something beautiful, she could be set free. Uh, because that would bring dignity and worth and value and a little bit of, you know, not just a little bit, but some self-esteem and, and something uh, of, God, uh, of, of our original design and what he's done to our lives and save us out of depression. Now, I want to just read to you the Webster's definition of love. <clears throat> it means in a general sense to be pleased with. In a general th sense to be pleased with. Uh, in Afrikaans it would be a algemene gevoel van tevredenheid. In other words, just a general feeling of I am pleased with. So if we say that um, God loves us or God loves the world, it's a general sense of God being pleased with man. Now, <clears throat> uh, uh, that could definitely not be based on what man does because people murder each other, people destroy one another's lives and all those kind of things. It means that God had to look at man in a different way or outside of his works. So God was looking at design. The way a person would look at his child, you know, when his child is um, out in the world and maybe on drugs or part of a gang or something that's bad, uh, you would not be pleased with your child in the sense of what he does or what he goes through. Uh, but you would be, the reason why you would be displeased is because uh, the only thing that can actually please you is him and because he is pleasing in the sense of he's beautiful he's valuable he is your child and because he pleases you in the sense of design that's why you can be upset with what he is going through so um, uh, uh, when we say that god loves us we need to know that he is pleased with us uh, in a general sense it also means here to regard with affection on account of some qualities which excite pleasing sensations or desires of gratification. 
So if God agapes us or if God loves us, it means that he's content with us. It means that, um, you know, there are certain qualities, uh, you know, that excite pleasing sensations or a desire of gratification inside the heart of God when he beholds you. So the love that God express, expresses towards you is not just because he's inclined to love easily or because he's a loving being, uh, which he is, um, but it's because of something that is inside you. There's something inside you today that causes God, uh, you know, a, a pleasing sensation and a desire of gratification. Love is also an affection of the mind that manifests in life. In other words, when God loves, loves you, uh, you, you brought such an effect to his mind. When he beholds you, there's such a, a, a beauty that he beholds that it affects his mind to the point that it manifests in his life. The way in which God loved man is such a way, is such an awesome way that it excited his mind. What he, what he beheld excited his mind to the point that he said, this, these people are so beautiful, these people are so much my kind, these people are so much part of who and what I am, they live and move and have their being in me, there's no other being like me but them, and those thoughts uh, and, 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 and that excitement of the mind brought forth a manifestation wherein God gave his son to save us from that which destroys us for the sole purpose of sharing his quality of life with us, should we be willing. Um, I want to read on here. It says here, uh, <clears throat> to be excited by beauty or worth of any kind. So to, be, to love something is when I'm excited by the beauty and worth. Um, two days ago, I, I just went through uh, my wife's profile pictures and um, on her Facebook page, and I just saw this one picture that I took of her some maybe I think three three years ago <clears throat> and and I think she was even sitting on my motorbike and um, I took this picture just a close-up just with be her beautiful eyes and and just 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 her you know uh, and it was such a beautiful picture of her and when I looked at that it just excited my mind you know unto actions and what it, what it what I saw in that was just such a, um, I, I, f I felt gratitude, you know, that I'm married to her and that I can know her. I felt this, this pleasing sensation wherein I, it brought forth actions. And the actions was, oh, not, not just the actions, it, it brought forth a pleasing sensation in me, um, you know, and this is what it brought forth. This is my friend. This is my very best friend. And the actions was that I could even put it on Facebook and I just wanted to say to the whole world and acknowledge to everybody, you know, this is my best friend. Um, in the very same way, you know, God loves us and he wants to um, put us on display. That's what the word adopt actually means. And he wants to show to the whole world that this being that I've created here, this is the being that, that I want to show to the whole world and, and, and basically... Uh, um, put out for everybody to see uh, that this is the one that I share my life with and this is the being that I don't just love but I give them access to be co-owners of love, to be co-owners of peace, to be co-owners of righteousness and joy, you know, which is amazing. So here we see you know, that love is an affection of the mind that manifests in the life excited by beauty and worth or by the qualities of an object which communicate pleasure. So love is this, is this um, affections of the mind that manifests in, in life because uh, it's activated by the qualities of the object and these qualities communicate pleasure to the one that beholds it emotionally and or intellectually. So... Um, uh, it also, if you, if you continue to read, it is that which promotes, um, let me just read on here, uh, it's opposed to hatred, 
Love between sexes is compound affection consisting of esteem and benevolence or kindness. So what it says here is that when there's love, when you love somebody, it is when you behold someone that is so beautiful and so valuable that there would be benevolence. Benevolence would, would be something like loving kindness or kindness, wherein um, something inside the lover, the one that looks at the one uh, that produces the love inside him, when he would say, you know, I want to just be kind to him. In other words, I want to contribute to the happiness of that person. That is love. So I want to tell you, God doesn't just love you because he cannot help himself. He loves you because you are lovable to him. And he sees things in you that you might never even see, that you might never have even seen in your own life. Um, and now you might be in a place of depression, a place of great sin, a, pl a place of financial distress, a place of where you maybe have even abused your own children or you are just uh, uh, um, in a place where you hate yourself. I want to tell you God sees things in you that is so beautiful that it brings forth gratification in his life and it brings forth kindness to him wherein he wants to add to your happiness, you know, and do everything possible to contribute to your happiness. Therefore, he might even have, you know, he, therefore he works on, on my heart to make this video, that you can see this video, that you can, that he can lift your distresses and give you the wants of your heart, you know, which is also to experience love. So God doesn't just love you because he cannot help himself. God loves you with a reason. You are lovable. Glory to God. Thank you so much for listening to this. And um, please share this if you feel like doing that, for this can touch the lives of many people. God bless you.